Ladies and gentlemen, stand up and make some noise for 15 minutes of I'll bite. What the hell was that? <laughs> Didn't you say we're doing 15 minutes of eat? 15 minutes of eat. Was that from like two, three years ago when we decided to do that? <laughs> I th- Did Mike I- Biamonte just there say 15 minutes of eat? Listen, Adobe Audition can do tremendous things. My thing is, I could have <laughs> sworn, Crowder, I thought we were doing 15 minutes of eat. <laughs> so did I. We did it with the omelets. <laughs> I want to hear that again now. Now I want to hear that, that again. End. It was uh, oh, my mind is wrong. It was like uh, I think it was the slurping of a straw. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, stand. Like a Zydeco remix. This is a straw. Oh, okay. And then what? What is this? Uh, like a, like a pizzeria. Like sad. Like the soundtrack of The Sopranos. <laughs> if it took place in one pizzeria. Uh, Fifteen minutes of heat. Huh. Is sponsored by Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Start the new year in a new ride with no payments for 90 days. Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.com. We did do already more than 15 minutes of heat. Um, one of the stories, and we didn't talk about it much, but this Kyle Lowry story is building some momentum. He is not starting, he's made it clear that he wants to start. And well, he 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 backtracked a, a little bit after the loss yesterday. To be fair, because Friday night he did not start. He said, "I hope this is just a one-game thing." But and he said he wants to be in the starting lineup for sure. For sure, yes. yes. Which you know that he does. Yeah. This is the beginning of the end. I mean, I don't I don't think that that's a secret, right? I mean, this this has been coming for a while, and now I think we're kind of at it. But Ira. Winderman got a uh, a question in the Sun Sentinel, but it was more of a request. Please ask Kyle Lowry how he feels about getting benched, so he can say something out of pocket and force Pat Riley to trade him. <laughs> and Ira responds, "That's not how it works in this business, or at least how it works with me. Besides." Kyle Lowry has made it abundantly clear that he believes he should be a starter with this team. So what it comes down to is his play, not his comments or even body language. If he contributes as a reserve, then all else is ancillary. And if his lack of presence in the starting lineup proves debilitating, then Eric Spolstra and the Heat get a different answer. Of course, all this is transpiring as we move towards the February 8th NBA trading deadline. And at this point, Lowry has an expiring contract. It appears to have more value to the Heat than Lowry. And uh, again, all it takes is a game or two to alter that perception. But that is the perception right now. I yeah. think the Heat right now, I'm, uh, I, I don't think I'm saying anything out of line here, Solana. If they could move him with that contract, that expiring contract, they would do so in a heartbeat. I don't know if they would do so in a heartbeat. I think the question is more, what are they getting back? Do the Heat want to remain flexible? A lot of people are talking about Terry Rozier. A lot of people have talked about DeJounte Murray. What are they willing to risk outside of Lowry to land a DeJounte Murray, which doesn't seem likely anymore, or a Terry Rozier? I've seen Spencer Dinwiddie be discussed as well. Mm. What are they willing, on top of Lowry, to give up, which you know, would probably be a Niko Jovic, potential first-round picks, draft assets 
and what are they willing to get back to one, stay underneath that second tax apron so that Mickey Harrison doesn't have to pay the taxes, and two, to limit them in the offseason. That, to me, is the bigger question, and I don't think the Miami Heat are willing to take back contracts for a DeJounte Murray or for a Terry Rozier that would then limit them in cap space moving forward. I, I, don't, I don't see that as something the Miami Heat want to do. Possible they just release him? No. It wouldn't. It, it would make no sense for them to buy buy him out. Even maybe if he would agree, you know, to give up some of that that money. But I I don't see that as as a legitimate option if you're the Miami Heat because I mean that would look really bad then. Wouldn't well, it? Here, here's what Ira Winderman wrote today regarding Kyle Lowry. The Miami Heat appear to be moving toward an end game with Kyle Lowry in the wake of his shift to a reserve role the past two games. Resolution with the veteran point guard is not only expected by the February 8th trading deadline, but potentially could come as early as this week. Where Lowry previously has been viewed as a stabilizing presence, the 37-year-old veteran now stands with his primary value as an expiring $29.7 million salary. Lowry played 25 minutes as the Heat's third reserve in Sunday night's loss to the Magic. Uh, their third consecutive defeat. He closed one of nine from the field, including 0 of 6 on three-pointers. Prior to the game, Spo said of shifting Lowry to the bench, that's not an indictment of one player. Kyle's been great as a starter, really, last year off the bench, so this isn't really about him. This is about us to try, trying to get to a uh, higher level. And I believe that with Spo, just, you know, what he, tinkering is what he calls it, right? When he tinkers with different things, moves guys around, try to figure out the best uh, combination to be on the floor at the same time. But with the heat, the, the moving of pieces, you're going to upgrade at the point guard position. Terry Rozier, whoever you're speaking about, DeJount, uh, De, with DeJounte. DeJounte. I hate his name. <laughs> Murray, number five from the Hawks. But, like, to say the heat's one player away from a championship, it pops up my mind, no. But they just won the East last year. So, like, what are you? Because most people, when you're making moves at the I trade said deadline. I said you earlier. They added. Yeah. They added by drafting Triple J. And that's the thing. So, like, are, are we are we all in? Is Mickey all in? And uh, Solana just brought up the, the, the luxury tax and all that stuff. Are we all in to try to make this team as best as we can to win a championship? Because if they didn't make the playoffs last year, I'd say no. They won the damn East last year. So if we have to add a piece or two here or there, can we go back to the finals? I think Milwaukee fans would say no. I think a lot of fans would say no. The Knicks coming up. It's different teams out there. Be like, nah, y'all can't win it this year. But we're one year removed from winning the Eastern Conference. I, I agree. But, I mean, Terry Rozier makes $24 million this year, next year, and I think it's partly guaranteed in 25-26. If you think you're Terry Rozier away from getting Jimmy Butler his first ring – then go ahead, do it. But you want to be tied down to Terry Rozier for $23.5, and a half, $24 million over the next two seasons after this year? Like that, That's a legitimate question that needs to be asked here. Heat fans are scapegoating Kyle Lowry, and I agree 100%. He's been really bad the last three and a half weeks. I agree with Coach Bo taking him out of the starting lineup. But just look at the numbers. They took him out of the starting lineup against Atlanta. They only scored 24 points. They were still down eight at the end of the first quarter. They took him out. Against Orlando last night, they only scored 19 points. They were still down three at the end of the first quarter. Clearly, Lowry out of the starting lineup didn't fix your slow start issues, which have been abysmal since Jimmy Butler has returned. If you want to scapegoat Kyle Lowry, go ahead. There's deeper issues with this Heat team that's not just Kyle Lowry playing bad. I've seen an uh, amazing transformation from Solana. Hates Tua, mm -hmm. loves Kyle Lowry. Crazy. Now, a lot of South Florida sports fans would go the opposite direction, but Solana has carved out a lane. He is all in on Kyle Lowry. Mm -hmm. Spo is making a mistake, and he is 100% out on Tua. I like it, Solana. I applaud you for it. I'm not defending Kyle Lowry. <laughs> I just think it's silly for everybody to say, oh, trade him. Just get him out of here. Trade him. Okay, you have to add something to trade him, and you you want to give up Nico, or you want to give up a first round pick for Terry Rozier? Like what? Do we, t Terry Rozier? Yes, he's better than Kyle Lowry. That's not the missing piece for you. It doesn't like it doesn't make any sense to me. If the Heat are gonna trade Kyle Lowry or Tyler Hero, it has to be for a piece.
that is going to take. But them what are you going to do? You got a thirty million dollar a year guy shooting one of nine. What, like what? What are you going to do? You, and Solana, you, as you expire. yell, Nico, it's not impressive. I'm gonna just tell you that from a. I'm a Heat fan. I know you cover them. You know the guys. Like nobody's worried about losing Nico. Heat fans are. Crowder, I I'm I'm fine with with packaging Nico to a deal if you're getting back a player that his caliber can make you a legitimate title contender even if Jimmy Bam and Tyler are struggling. But we're like Terry Rozier, DeJounte Murray. Like you have to pay those guys a lot of money over the next couple seasons. That's and, what you want to go. You're you're pushing and all most, your chips to the middle of the table. I can't, I can't wait till they move on from Lowry and, and Solana completely <laughs> changes like, his what, tune. No, Solana, and I'm not arguing with you. I just the thought of this where you just said if we move these pieces, we have to be a legit contender. We were a legit contender last year because we won the East and went to the finals. So, like, were we a, con- a legit contender? What can Terry Rozier do more than Kyle Lowry can do? Because this team, minus the boy that went to L.A. and a couple other pieces that left, Strauss and all those guys. Like, <laughs> what's his name? How quickly this they is forget. great. <laughs> what's the boy in L.A.? I forgot his name. Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent. And Max Struess. Max Struess. <laughs> we lose those guys. The guy's point is that they were just in the NBA Finals, and, and it's, like, it's like just a few months ago, and he's like, the boy in L.A. and Strauss. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, to your point, like, oh, this is going to be a big piece. Bro, they just went to the finals last year with the same big three that you're talking about. What are we going to add to them? Do we need to add something? I know they're struggling now, but we've talked about it. They weren't killing everybody in the regular season last year either. You're missing my point. I'm fine with trading Kyle Lowry. He's been really bad. He's been really bad. But don't say, hey. Everything will be fixed if you trade Kyle Lowry. Go get a better point guard. Okay, I'm down. But you want to pay Terry Rozier that amount of money for the next two seasons? You want to pay DeJounte Murray $27.5 million over the next three seasons when his extension kicks in next year? You're pushing all your chips to the center of the table for Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and one of those two guys. I mean, and to well, me, that's, well, that's folly. Wait a second, though. It's not all your chips. It is. And you easily could move... Tyler Hero in coming season. Can you? Can, can yes, you? You're saying abs- easily. Absolutely. Hawk, we just went through a whole offseason where your biggest trade piece was Tyler Hero. But and, was, and Joe was, Cronin wouldn't no, even no, no, sit no, down no, with nah, you. But, it was, but I, I, don't, I don't think Joe Cronin, you can use him as the barometer of whether there was a market for Tyler Hero or not. Because, I mean, that, that, that thing was bungled from the get-go. I, I don't think it's moving all your chips in. I think it's, hey... Can we do anything this season? We'll deal with it next season because that's what Andy Ellisberg is always able to do, and that's what Pat Riley's always been able to do. Is there anything that we can do this season? Kyle Lowry is obviously a guy whose minutes are waning. Is there anything we can do to improve this season and give us a better chance at making a run in the postseason like we did last year? And then we'll see what happens when the, the and and I don't think that's folly. Like I I think that's I think that's fair. I think Kyle Lowry's not going to be the piece you need to get to the NBA Finals. He wasn't or to get to win the NBA Finals. And so you've got to move on if you can upgrade him slightly and then worry about it next off season. I don't think you'd be hamstrung by that particular roster for for seasons to come. I mean, you hope you're not. But right, but it's, I, a, it's I think, a risk. It's a risk. You're, you're, you're if you're willing to make it, then I'm. I'd be cool with it. I'm just saying I don't foresee Pat Riley and Andy Ellisberg saying, "Hey, we can get 30 million off the books at the end of this season." And by the way, we like our team. We hope when Hawkes comes back, this team will be able to figure it out and go on another one of these big runs, which is what I think they feel about this roster, and they're willing to sacrifice flexibility this off season to improve at Kyle Lowry's position with a guy they're going to owe a lot of money to over the next couple years. And that's where I differ there, where I don't, I don't think the front office believes the risk outweighs the reward. Right. I mean, we'll find out. We're going to find out in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Like, we'll have a definitive answer on that. So we shall see. All right, there you go. Uh, 15 minutes of heat. And uh, heat, they're off till Wednesday. Solana? Yeah, they get the Grizzlies Wednesday night at the Kaseya Center. Second night of a back-to-back because they get the Celtics the fall or first night of the back-to-back. They get the Celtics Thursday night at the Kaseya Center as well. And by the way, on this radio show tomorrow, 
radio station or just this show? Heat Celtics tickets every hour. Every hour mm. on, at, for sure, our show and Tobin and Leroy as well. I imagine the morning show. Also, I don't okay. know for sure, but Tobin and Leroy were promoing it today. Our show tomorrow, every hour. All right, so if you want to win Heat Celtics tickets, you listen to this radio station uh, tomorrow, every single hour, you're going to have a chance to win Heat Celtics tickets for Thursday night at the Kaseya Center.